As you regular viewers will know, I'm always going on about stuff in our modern world contributing to our ever worsening climate crisis. One of the areas we haven't looked at in any great detail yet is the building sector, and that's a bit of an omission because according to the International Energy Agency, it's responsible for no less than 39% of total global greenhouse gas emissions. And those emissions are created by running machinery that compensates for the appalling inefficiencies in the way we currently build houses. Heat energy escapes from our homes through badly sealed windows and poorly insulated walls and roof spaces, and then we spend oodles of cash putting heat back into our living spaces just so it can leak straight back outside again. And in the hotter months, those gaps in our building's fabric let all the outside heat inside too. So we spend even more money on machines that pull that heat out of our spaces while more warm air continues to come back in through the holes in our walls and windows. It's all a little bit stupid. This guy isn't stupid. He's called Dr. Wolfgang Feist. And back in 1991, he built a new home using materials and techniques that he developed through many years of research and consultation with leaders in the building industry. That single construction spawned a global movement that's come to be known as Passive House. The home that Dr. Feist built nearly 30 years ago was so well constructed and insulated that it still meets the now very stringent requirements of the International Passive House Institute, by which I mean it uses about 90% less energy than a traditional house. The consequence of that is that there's virtually no requirement for expensive electrical heating and cooling systems, which saves a good deal of money and prevents quite a lot of carbon dioxide going up into the atmosphere. So surely by now, after 30 odd years, the construction industry builds all new houses to these specifications, right? Hello, and welcome to Just Have a Think. Anyone who's tried to build a house will no doubt tell you that it's a pretty complicated, time-consuming and expensive business. Self-builders are often advised to calculate a budget and timeline as carefully as possible and then double it for the real world. One piece of advice that all builders understand though is that the more time and care they give to the design details before starting the build, the less time and money they'll need to spend later on expensive remedials and retrofits. No doubt you've all heard the cliched business acronym of these six Ps. In the case of house building, you could replace the first word with passive house and you'd have yourself a nice snappy mantra for the movement. So what are the fundamental principles that make passive house buildings so much more energy efficient? Well, first of all, you need something called a super insulated envelope, which means all the bits that separate the inside from the outside. So that's the walls, roofs and floors. And that means using construction assemblies that double or even triple the thermal insulation of the building compared to most standard building regulations and codes. In Northern Europe and the upper regions of North America, buildings are also insulated from the ground using foam glass or gravel blocks which don't rot, won't compact, don't get attacked by insects and are completely fireproof. Carefully considered insulating materials don't just keep things toasty warm inside in the colder parts of the Northern Hemisphere, they also keep the heat out in warmer environments too. So you get an astonishingly consistent and comfortable ambient interior temperature all year round, wherever you are in the world. Plus, you get improved soundproofing, increased durability and greater building resiliency. But of course, any insulation in a building is only as good as its weakest link. Ideally, you want a completely continuous, unbroken wrap of materials around the structure, but things do get in the way, like struts for walls and frames for doors and windows, which brings us to the second fundamental principle of Passive House, minimization of thermal bridging. Any physical component that can transfer heat energy between the interior and the exterior is a thermal bridge. Steel joists and lintels are the worst offenders because of the inherent conductivity of metal, but there's a huge amount of small architectural detailing on a house that often gets overlooked as a thermal bridge. Passive house construction aims to avoid as many of those junctions as possible, and where they can't be avoided, usually for structural reasons, then the builders spend a lot of time on these vulnerable areas, over-insulating connections and protrusions, and using intermittent connections to break the continuity of heat flow. That envelope seal is enhanced by the third fundamental principle, which is airtight construction. Special membranes, tapes and seals are carefully fitted to minimise the volume of uncontrolled air exchange between interior and exterior, which in turn minimises energy use from reheating the air, discomfort from cold air drafts near the walls and localised moisture and condensation problems. 
There are strict criteria for a passive house project to be certified as airtight. The building gets tested during construction with an air blower and it must have fewer than 0.6 air changes per hour to pass the test. Now obviously if you were to seal the building completely hermetically and then sit inside for a few days you'd find yourself eventually becoming dead which would be unfortunate. So you do need some sort of fresh air supply. But the tried and tested passive house experience is that it's far more effective to keep the building envelope airtight and then install an efficient mechanical air exchange system which leads us to principle number four, heat recovery ventilation. Getting fresh air in and extracting built up pollutants, odors, carbon dioxide and moisture is essential for a healthy living environment. A passive house heat recovery ventilator is designed to do all these things. The smart feature is that it extracts heat from the exhaust air and puts it into the incoming air without directly mixing the air streams together. That way you don't lose all your heat to the outside. The standard that a passive house HRV system must achieve is at least 75% heat recovery. And in the hot summer months, the system can bypass the heat recovery core, so you just get the fresh air without retaining heat. In dry locations, interior spaces with low humidity levels can become uncomfortable and quite unhealthy. So an alternative ventilation system is used called an energy recovery ventilator or ERV. It's similar to an HRV, but it can also capture moisture from the outgoing exhaust air and circulate it back into the building. And you know, if you really just want to get a gulp of outdoor freshness, especially in the warmer weather, then there's nothing to stop you actually opening a window. That is allowed. And windows, or to use the proper lingo, high performance glazing, are the fifth and final fundamental principle in passive house construction. By their very nature, windows and glazed doors are designed to provide light and visibility, so they obviously can't be insulated to the same degree as a wall, and that makes them the weakest link in the barrier continuity chain. Passive house glazing systems have non-conductive framing or include large thermal breaks. The frames themselves are also heavily insulated. In most cases, triple glazed units are used instead of double glazed, and the space between each pane is filled with inert gases like argon or krypton. The glass gets multiple low E value coatings, plus what the industry calls warm edge or non-conductive spaces. Good architectural design optimizes free passive heating from the sun, which can significantly offset the amount of heat a building needs during colder months. And to keep heat transferred down during the hotter months, the orientation of the building and location of glazing plays an important role. Pointing the windows south and using clever shading prevents too much solar heat getting into the house. The building supplies industry has responded very positively to the passive house standard over the years, with more and more innovative products and services coming to market all the time, all of which are designed to add efficiency and practicality into the design and build. Smart wall systems and ultra slim insulation panels like these, that give the same insulation value as traditional products but with only a tenth of the thickness, have vastly improved build quality and speed, and smart electrical and lighting systems like this one from a company called LumenCash are revolutionising the way electrical energy is consumed and controlled by the householder. Their installations run all the lighting in a household, either from AC grid power or from 24 or 48 volt DC solar power systems using the same low cost, low energy data cables found in the IT industry. The power source combines with a battery storage system so your lighting circuit stays energised even in a grid power outage. DC power is perfectly suited to LED lighting and with sensor data carried by the Cat5 wires, the system knows when lights can be automatically turned on or off depending on motion within a room. They also enable devices to be run that detect things like air quality and leaks and reliably communicate updates to the occupants without the environmental impact or hassle of checking and changing batteries in the devices. Building a passive house used to be regarded as an expensive indulgence for very wealthy people, but 30 years of design and construction experience all over the world coupled with rapid advances in material technologies, mean that today a well-planned passive house is very competitively priced compared to a traditional construction. Researching these videos is always quite a time-consuming business, but the sheer volume of information on passive house construction from governments, organisations and self-help groups all over the world has been quite overwhelming. You might be considering diving into a project yourself, so I've left as many links as I can in the description box below, categorised by country 
and even including information about retrofitting existing homes to passive house standards, which there simply wasn't enough time to talk about in this programme, although that might be a follow-up video for a later date. And of course, if you've already got experience of building a passive house project, and you've got any helpful hints and tips that others could benefit from, then jump down to the comments section below and leave your thoughts there. That's it for this week though. Thanks to our fantastic Patreon supporters who help keep the channel independent and keep these videos ad free. You can support the channel that way too and receive exclusive monthly news updates from me plus content polls to choose each month's topics by visiting www.patreon.com forward slash just have a think. And of course you can hugely support the channel absolutely for free by subscribing and hitting that like button. And if you want to be notified about new content each week, make sure you hit that little bell icon too. Dead easy to subscribe, you just need to click down there or on that icon there. As always, thanks very much for watching. Have a great week if you can. And remember to just have a think. See you next week.